Welcome to our middle school chapel today. Mr. Raj is away on professional business, so I will be covering for him today. Um, we're going to start by singing our school hymn. Please rise, and then we'll stay up for our national anthem. Thank you, eighth grade. Next week, we'll begin uh, combining our middle school grades here. I'm looking forward to having everyone together. Uh, but this is our last middle school chapel with just the eighth grade. So thanks, thanks for singing. Um, this is a, a bit of an in-between week in the middle school between our fall and winter seasons. And I just want to say it's been wonderful to have the middle school students uh, yesterday out at dismissal. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but the influence that you have on the younger students is palpable. You can see the way they pick up, the way they follow your lead. Um, you all are tremendous leaders, um, and I appreciate it when I see you connecting with your buddies or connecting with your bus friends. Um, it's, it's really cool to see. So thank you for making this appearance this week uh, before we head into the musical and to the basketball season next week. Um, eighth grade, also, congratulations on the IC. Uh, for all of you that took it, I know that that was a hurdle. Um, life is more than a test, and you are far more than any number or test score. But that said, you put a lot of work into preparing, and I know that felt like a big, a big hurdle. So congratulations. And uh, finally, I just want to say, Congratulations and thank you to the ambassadors uh, for being here for the open house on Sunday. It made a huge difference uh, to hear your voices, to see you leading tours, uh, made a big impression. My, um, my own, oh, I'm getting feedback. There we go. Um, my wife was here taking a tour. She was incognito, so maybe you didn't know she was on your tour. She had big positive things to say about you. So thank you. All right. I'm just excited to be leading a middle school chapel, so I have all sorts of things to say. Uh, I get to introduce today's chapel speaker, um, and our chapel speaker today is Lonnie Darty. Um, here's some of the things that her teachers have said about her. That she's a positive influence. That she's pleasant and kind. Lonnie always brought a smile to fourth grade daily. She tried hard every single day and took teacher direction positively. She's not afraid to ask questions and has no trouble speaking out if things are not well explained. Lonnie's done a lot of different activities and things during her time here. Um, she's been a soccer player. She's been involved in the musical. Um, she's just finished doing some ceramics. Um, she's observant, creative, always focused on getting it right. She's actually one of our longest attending students, having begun here in kindergarten. Um, this year, we don't have anyone who started in pre-K. All of our longest standing students started in kindergarten. So um, she's seen a lot, and she's grown a lot during that time. So since she's been here, since that very young age, five years old, Lonnie has seen and experienced so much about Montgomery, and today she gets to experience something that she's seen a lot of other people go through. Um, and, and her message is about that and about... Uh, the resilience and strength in the face of new opportunities and challenges. So let's welcome her to the stage. Thank you, Mr. McManus, for that wonderful introduction. Hello, students, parents, faculty, and friends. Today I'm going to talk to you about calming your nerves for your chapel. 
I'm gonna be honest, I'm really nervous right now. I'm just as nervous as when I had to take the IC test and not the practice one, although I was still nervous about that. Doing a chapel can be scary. Some may be more scared than others, and some might not really be scared. And that's okay. Everyone will or has been scared to do their chapel, whether they show it or not. I'm going to give you some tips on how to calm your nerves. Number one, practice. Practice in front of your friends, pets, family, and more. I practiced in front of my parents and got some ideas and tips from my friends. Like everything in life, things need practice. For me, I practice golf. For golf, I take lessons every Saturday or Sunday for 30 to 45 minutes. And in the summer, I do three lessons a week for an hour each lesson. And I practice with my dad. Some of you might know my dad is a big golf guy, and so is my mom. In golf, each club does something different. It's a process, just like your chapel. When I golf, I picture where I want the ball to go. It's the same way as you would picture how you want your chapel to go. And I'm sure most of you practice something in your life. This is just another thing that needs practice. Believing in yourself. It's so important to believe in yourself because if you don't, you won't have the confidence you need to do the best chapel you can do. When you have big things like a soccer game or a music performance, you need to believe in yourself. For me and most of my grade, we needed to believe in ourselves for the IC test. For the IC, it just takes practice. I pra by practice, I mean studying all summer until and until the test. You don't have to study in the summer if, if you want to get, you have to study in the summer if you want to get into a good grade. So I would recommend school, I would recommend it. Number three, being calm. What calm means to me is relaxed and not stressed out. What calm actually means is a quiet and peaceful state or condition. Some of you might have little siblings, not me. I have a nephew, Danny. He's in pre-K here at Montgomery. When he throws tantrums, you just have to ignore him, just like you have to ignore your nerves, which can be really hard, and it's okay if you can't. Just try. One tantrum he threw was about his shoes being on the wrong feet. We were at school, my mom was late for a physical therapy appointment and I was late to advisory. He yelled at my mom that he would not go into the classroom with his shoes on the wrong feet. It was pretty funny. And in a couple of years, he'll be doing his chapel and I want him to look at this chapel and use my tips for his nerves about his chapel. Number four, being prepared. Being prepared is probably one of the most important things for your chapel because if you wait until the last second, you'll end up not doing well in your chapel. When you get to eighth grade and the topic chapel comes up, Mr. Hutchinson will give you a paper with guidelines for when you should have certain things done. Personally, it's really helped me. Don't leave your chapel to the last minute because I can guarantee you it won't go well. My nanny Marina studied with me on Saturday and Sunday for three hours. Number five, trust in yourself. Trust, trusting yourself is another big thing for your chapel. If you go up on this stage not trusting yourself, you'll fall. By fall, I mean you'll be wrong because you'll do great. And you have to trust yourself so you don't feel more nervous than if you were to not trust yourself. When you trust yourself, you probably won't be that nervous. You also have to trust others to have confidence in you. One time for a field trip, we went to Hershey Park and we were going on the new roller coaster. I was really scared because I made the mistake of my first roller coaster being a wooden one, but that was like two years before this, so it's been a while since I've been on a roller coaster, and it was my first metal one. When we went on, I was so scared, but I trusted myself to go on the roller coaster, and I was with my friends, so they trusted me, and I ended up having a lot of fun on the roller coaster. I like them more now, not just the wooden ones. They scare me really bad. When you do something that can be scary, it's good to have things that calm you down or make you comfortable and choose a topic that makes you happy, not others. You need to be comfortable to do your chapel. For me, when I was writing my chapel, I had my cat sitting on my lap. When you need help, it's okay to ask others. I ask my friends, family, and teachers what they do to calm their nerves when they have to do things like this. My dad owns his own company, so he has to do public speaking a lot. He told me, remember, a little bit of anxiety keeps you alert, vigilant, and ready for optimal performance. It also shows you care, and if you care, you will always do well because care translates to commitment, which translates to success. My mom was in Miss USA. If you don't know what that is, it's a competition where there's a woman representing a state in the US, and my mom was Miss Vermont. 
She had to talk in front of a huge crowd and on TV, which was pretty scary. But she did it, and, and believe it or not, she was first runner-up to win Miss USA and lost by one point. I have a video. And now, Mr. Lamont, will you step up here? The funny thing is that all of that was a lie. She had no interest in art, but she had to think of something fast, even if it was a lie. Overall, when you're up here doing your chapel, I hope you can use my tips as guidance to help you not be as nervous, and, and you can do your chapel with belief, trust, and calmness. I'm going to leave you with this quote. There are t only two types of speakers in the world, the nervous and the liars, Mark Twain. This quote relates to my chapel because if you're, n if you're not nervous, you're lying. You won't, and you won't do as well if you're honest, and you'll do better if you're honest with yourself. Thank you and have a nice day.